I couldn't get work anywhere and I wasn't able to volunteer even anywhere. I know very few places that don't even allow you to volunteer and that was one area that didn't. I don't, aside from going through the phone book and spending countless months trying to get work by calling ahead, I went by foot. I didn't just go throughout the entire town of Wenatchee and East Wenatchee door to door one time. I went twice. I walked or took a bus like to the half part of town and then walked the rest of the way and knocked on doors or went in in person smiled, let people know um, that I was available to work passed out resumes or gave them my phone number or asked if they were hiring I tried to strike up conversation I went to all of the businesses twice And this is a town that is supposed to help me get my son back. I, I believe that that was the entire reason that I filed a motion for change of venue. Because that area was prejudiced against me. There was no possible way I was going to get my son back. All of the local people were working against me. And the state was invested in paying people and to work against me. And then I thought it was just the local people. I just thought maybe it's Washington or Oregon or some people who are in this area. And then I find out that, oh, it's the federal government too because, you know what, it's not the local people that are torturing me by teletorture by the aerospace defense industry. They're not the ones controlling the satellites and the MRI kinds of um, satellite technology that they have now. They have nothing to do with that. They may be, they're not hiring me because I've been so blacklisted by the FBI. Who wants to hire somebody that the FBI is saying is crazy? and? who, when they're supporting people who are claiming that I'm holding up knives against them. Sure, I, I would really love to hire you for a, a job. Nobody wants to hire somebody that they think is suing their friends of their friends, either. So after I looked for work throughout the entire area and called all of the different numbers that there were to call, and when I found out this one guy that I lived with was going through my bags and giving, actually he was taking some of my cards, some of my um, video cards out um, from me. I had a couple of video cards that had evidence still of, of a few visits of my son. Those things were being stolen from me. They were being stolen from that house. And then I found out that this one guy in particular was connected to the police. Ben was connected to the local police and giving them things. And then the other two individuals, well one of them, was connected to the military. So I basically had to look for a different place to stay and at that point I believe I went to a woman's shelter and I didn't realize that this woman's shelter, that the person running it was best friends with Michael Holt, went to her church and Michael Holt put gift baskets for that shelter to, uh, together. 
I mean, I was basically walking right into Michael Holt's best, one of her best friends, you know, traps. I was insulted. They did everything they could to make it look like I was doing something wrong. And it was just another notch in the belt for the people who are local to try to keep me from having my son return to me. I finally, after that, I found out that the community center had some sort of, there was a new federal program that would entitle me to have an allowance of uh, several thousands of dollars over a two year period for housing. Basically, if I applied for it and I was low income enough, I was entitled to have, to choose my own apartment and to spend an amount of money that would keep me from being homeless through federal monies. And basically I qualified, they approved me as qualified. And then Seattle, Washington contacted the Wenatchee group and told them to cut me off of all funding. And they forced me into being homeless. And actually, before they cut me off of that, I did try, there were only two women's shelters in the entire town. I tried the other one, and I was assaulted there with technology of some kind. I don't know what they were using, but that's what happened, and the staff there was um, defaming me. That was at the YMCA in Menachee, or YWCA. There was only one other shelter, and they refused to allow me to stay there. They never told me why. They just, every time I went, they, would, they refused. And that's when I went to try to get, I found about this federal amount of money, and I tried to sign up for it. And I was able to sign up for it, and then I was tortured at the place that I stayed at on that money. And to the point that my legs were swelling up to twice their size. And at that point, my wonderful fiancé decided to call and say it's too late, and maybe you are crazy, is what he said. He had been calling me all the way up to that point, wanting to get back together, and I never called him once. And then he called me one day, right after the, this earthquake in Chile happened. He called me out of the blue. And then I didn't, don't remember even saying anything about getting back together, really. He just, I just remember, I said I wanted to get my son back. And then he said something about, it's too late. And then he said, I don't know, maybe, I said, I'm being tortured over here. And then he said, I don't know, maybe you are crazy. That's what he said. And he knew I wasn't because I was tortured at his house in Maryland. He knew exactly what was being done to me. He still knows exactly what is being done to me. And he knows who's doing it. After that, after that phone call with him, that's when the federal government decided to force me out into the streets with nothing. They cut off my federal housing money. And supposedly, I was told by Wenatchee that Seattle, Washington, was the, um, their supervisors were the ones to instruct them to do this to me. And then I was forced out of that house that I had been staying in, and the Wenatchee police officers took and went through, went through all of my personal belongings that were remaining there, and I wasn't allowed to pick them up. And the police went through them. When I asked where, what happened to everything, I was told that it wasn't there. He didn't have it anymore. And basically, the police had gone through everything that had belonged to me. Anything that was not 
in Seattle, Washington that was pilfered through by the FBI was being pilfered through by the local police from at Steve May's house where I had been staying. And from, from there, I was, uh, they knew that Community Action, I already talked to them. They already knew that I, there were no women's shelters or homeless shelters available to me. They already knew that I'd gone to all of the church resource places and asked for help or assistance with an apartment or paying a rent for some period of time. I had already exhausted all of those resources. So I had no church that could help me any longer. I I was degraded enough to be forced to go to churches that I would never go to and basically ask them, beg them to help me with rent. I was basically forced to go to people who were my worst enemies. And my worst enemies were no different from the Christians and the people that I would have thought would be potential friends. And at that point, I was forced to yeah. the federal government forced me to live on the streets while they had local police circling around me, mocking me and laughing at me even in the middle of the night as I tried to find a place to sleep outside. They degraded. When they knew that there was nothing wrong with me. After they forced me to sleep outside with people in the town mocking me and while they continued to torture me and I was followed by police everywhere I went. Then they brought around another military person to tell me, oh, you can stay with me. And then it was just being forced from one military place to the next, knowing that I had, and showing me first, you have no options. You don't have federal housing to live on your own. You don't have a woman's shelter to live in because we forced you out of it. And now, your only option, if you don't want to live on the street and continue to be humiliated, is to live with United States military while they observe you under the stress of being tortured and while they conduct their own forms of research on you. That's what this country's done to me and my son.